Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the TOC Virtual Campery. Now, this is the first of its kind, and you guys should actually thank God that you are part of this privilege. Now, please join me as we explore and literally go out of this earth. My name is Gahi Somakhanu, and I will be presenting the Astronomer Award. Now, this unlike many other awards, is an award which should be done outdoors. So being a virtual campery does not stop us from actually exploring and doing the requirements as the GC has prescribed them. Now, boys and girls, astronomer literally just deals with being outdoor. And if you go outdoor, particularly at night, and look into the sky, you will then notice that the sky is filled with absolute beauty. I think on load shedding days, that's when you actually get to see it the most because then you get to see God's power and might in its display. It is peaceful, it is quiet, and if you were in nursery school, you'd be singing with me, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. How I wonder what you are. And that's what we'll be finding out and exploring today. Now, there are seven requirements which we need to complete in order for us to be able to attain this award. The first one being that we need to name the several stargazers in the Bible. So this in itself gives us the reassurance that we're not just making up stuff because we are bored. It's something which we can find. Astronomy is a skill we can find in the Bible. The second requirement requires us to identify one planet, two stars, and three constellations in the sky at night with their correct names. The third requirement requires us to make a constellation peep box. The fourth one, we need to explain the difference between a planet and a star. And then the fifth requirement allows us to go outside and to observe the planets and the stars in the sky at night. The sixth requirement says we need to observe two of the following and make a cry in resistance. And then the last one, boys and girls, another practical one says that we need to find three texts in the Bible that refer to the heavens, okay? So don't you worry if you've missed one of the seven requirements because we will be dwelling in it throughout this lesson. So let's go back to the first one. The first one requires us to name several stargazers of the Bible. Now I have chosen these two, four, five stargazers, which I found in my Bible. And I'm sure you can also find it when you explore with me. The first one being Adam and Eve. Do you remember Cain and Abel's parents? They were known to also stargaze. Now the beauty about stargazing boys and girls is that you again receive the reassurance of God's ability. The second one being Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons. Do you know how many the sons were? Now, the answer is quite simple. God told Abraham to look at the sky and as many as the stars are up there on the earth, that's how many sons he will have. Now, we also have added that daughters are included in this. So Father Abraham today has got many sons and many daughters, and you are one of them. And I am also one of them too. Now, Jesus, the author and the maker of our faith, was also a stargazer. Now, imagine this. After creating a masterpiece, and then you also take a bit of time to explore the beauty of your creation. So Jesus, in the SDA commentary, that book also tells us a little bit more about how Jesus would find peace at night when he went to Galilee, when he was about to be crucified, he found comfort in just looking at the stars. 
Why? Because they were creation and they are ever so peaceful. They offer peace, which comes with a guarantee. I wonder what would happen if God one day said, there's load shedding, no stars, no moon, and no sun. That would be a shame. Do you agree? I know you do. So anyway, we also have Moses, who was also a stargazer. And then the last people were the wise men, which are found in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 2. So stars, boys and girls, have always also been known to help us find direction. So the wise men knew that a savior is born. Christ is born. How did they know that? Because they looked into the sky and they saw a star which didn't look like any other stars. And they followed the root cause of that star in order for them to find where Christ was born. So this makes me wonder if all the characters which I have just labeled for you relied on stars and God's universe and God's nature for guidance, for reassurance, for hope, and for peace. Don't you think that if we spent a lot of our time outside, we'd also have less anxiety, depression, and stress? I definitely know that mommy wouldn't be shouting at you in nature, reminding you to wash your dishes or to make your bed. So the next time you're worried about that, look into God's nature and you will find absolute peace of mind. Become a stargazer, just like the people in the Bible. Now, boys and girls, in this huge universe, imagine with lots of us on earth, we are just a fraction of God's creation. Just like literally one ounce of his creation. He created the universe. Now, whenever I say universe, I'm referring to the stars, the moon, and earth being a planet, also being part of the huge universe. Now, if you look at our solar system, and I know this is up for debate, but maybe because I am an older person and I am relying on the information I found when I was younger, I'm just going to relay that information to you. So if you look at your screens and you look at the planets which we have, the requirement says you must identify one planet. I'm going to give you all eight planets and then you can decide which one catches your attention. The first one being closest to the sun is Mercury. The second one being Venus. The third one being Earth. And the fourth one being Mars. Fifth, Jupiter, also known as the largest planet. And then we've got Saturn, we've got Uranus, and then we've got Neptune, boys and girls. These are our planets. And we need to know that these planets orbit around the sun. Now, the word orbit means that they are rotating around the sun. I'm sure now that we're in the summer season, you have noticed that the sun sets a little bit later, as opposed to when we have the winter season, where the sun sometimes at five o'clock already, it is already dark. That is because we are orbiting around the sun. So I want you to quickly imagine that my left hand is the sun and we being the third planet, we are Earth. We then have to rotate around the sun and that's how we then get day and night. So obviously, if we are facing away from the sun as the African continent, then it will obviously be nighttime because the sun would have been behind us. And then morning comes again as soon as we are facing the sun. And that's how the earth revolves around the sun. And that's how all the planets revolve around the sun, boys and girls. Now, isn't this a wonder? And have you ever wondered then who is in charge of us? Why is there so much order? 
Why does the sun always rise and set? Why does the moon come? Why does the ocean not just swallow us at any point? Because there's a creator, my boys and girls. There's a God in heaven who is in control of all of this. So he's not just in control of me and you, but he's also controlling his creation. Do you understand that? If you do, say amen with me wherever you are. Then, boys and girls, the second part of the second requirement requires us to identify two types of stars. Now, because we are so far away from the stars, it sometimes becomes impossible for us to see the different colors and the different types of stars we have. I have only shared but a few on the screen. There's the yellow draft star, and there's a blue um, star. There are different types of stars. But because we're on Earth, we only see twinkling stars on Earth. But the closer we get to the universe, and I hope and pray that one day we can be in the universe, um, closer to the, to the planets, then we will get to see how wonderful God is and how much order there is in his creation. So take a look at the pictures which I've shared with you. Then you can decide which one of those stars are your favorite. And in your head, I also want you to make a mental note of the one star which I did not list in that, um, on that slide. Now think about it. There's one big star. We can't even face it, but without it, we'll probably freeze to death or we'll probably be in absolute darkness because of that one star. Now take a wild guess, think about it for three seconds, and then I'm sure you now have the answer. It is the sun, S-U-N, the biggest star we have and the most visible star for all of us here on earth. Without it, plants would not grow. We probably wouldn't go to school and Netflixing and watching YouTube videos the whole day would never do us any good. So that then again, boys and girls, alludes to us and it reassures us that God is indeed great. And he is the master and the creator of all of these things which we have around us. Now, boys and girls, the third part of the second curriculum requires us to think about constellations. Now say that word with me, constellation. It's a big word but it basically means a group of stars. Now, back then, in the olden days, people didn't have TikTok, nor did they have YouTube, nor did they have any source of entertainment. So they found pure and true entertainment in God's nature. Most of the stars in the universe Stay at one position for the longest of time. But remember what I said earlier on, we are the ones rotating. So therefore, as the earth rotates and as the earth literally revolves around the sun, we get to see different things at different times. Now, if you are in Gauteng like me, it becomes very difficult to see stars. Why? because there's pollution, because you prefer watching Gomorrah over watching God's stars. There's basically a lot of things which are hindering us from seeing these constellations. From, it hinders us from seeing the type of stars which we have in our universe. However, I want to challenge you today that try when you go to rural areas, when you go to less condensed areas, look up in the skies and you will always see something. Now, back then, the people decided that, you know what? There are different groups of stars. 
when we are looking up in the sky, this is what the stars look like. All right. So the first constellation and the most famous one, which can be seen in Africa, in Australia, in Asia, absolutely all over in the universe is this one which is currently in front of you. So this is known to be the Orion constellation. Now, if you look closely at the picture on your right, well, it should also be on your right, you will see that it looks like a warrior of some sort. It looks like a man holding a bow and arrow, or rather a sword and an arrow, but ready to fight. Now, if you get the opportunity to be outdoors in nature, try and lay on your back and look at the stars. See if you can identify the Orion. Now, you can see this any time of the evening, particularly during the November and January months, because that's when we are closer to, the, to this particular constellation. The second constellation, boys and girls, is the Taurus. Now, the Taurus, people imagined that it looks like a bull. I don't know if you agree with me, but when I looked at the picture on the left, I don't see a bull. However, we rely on their knowledge and their experience, and then we are prone to believe that it looks like a bull. So unless you can imagine something different, probably your dog or your puppy, then you can decide on your own to change the name of the Taurus into something else. But because the whole universe gets to see the same view of the Taurus, they decided that it is then going to be called the Taurus. Now, the last constellation um, which I chose is the Capricorn. Now, they said that this one looks like a sea goat, like it literally looks like a goat which is on a chariot of some sort. Now, again, I don't necessarily agree with them, but if you look at the picture on the right, you will see that the constellation of the stars creates a different shape. Now, this is the task I'm giving you to think about it the next time you get the opportunity to look at God's stars, you will always see the different constellations. Now, because technology has advanced, you can ask your parents to download the constellation app. Now, this is an application on any phone, Android or iOS, and you can use that to help you map the different constellations, which we might have at the different times of the year. I've only shared three constellations with you. However, there are many more. Now, this is the beauty about the God we serve. He is not limiting us to one or two or three views. There are plenty more, but the trick is that we have to discover it. We have to learn to fall in love with God's creation. And we can only do that when we give him his presidency and we give him the honor and the opportunity to govern our lives. So now boys and girls, we're going to do a quick practical demonstration. I'm going to ask that the projection can be minimized so that we can actually get a little bit more practical in our doings. Now, for this particular presentation, you're going to need the following. Number one, you're going to need peel off stars. All right. This can be alternated by anything else. If you are more creative, then you can draw your own stars. Is that clear? And the number two, you need a clean sheet of paper. Now, I chose the black sheet of paper because at night, the sky is what color? Oh, exactly. It is black. So I'm quickly going to do my personal constellation. I'm going to do the Capricorn, all right? And then I'm going to show you how it looks like, all right? So again, I repeat, I've got my peel-off peel -off stickers. Absolutely anything would be fine for you to quickly create your constellation. 
Now I've got my ruler and my pencil so that I can quickly outline how the stars should be shaped. And then I'm going to use the same gray pencil to show you how it looks like, all right? So this should literally take me less than a minute because I'm an adult. And then you guys can take a bit more time because you have time at home and the school holidays have started. So you can then choose to make your constellations then. So you literally just peel off your stars and you make the connections of the constellation. And then because you are creative beings, you can then use those constellations to then showcase what you can also see if you look at the stars. All right, so um, this should kind of look like my goat. You will not get a full picture of it because unfortunately we're in a virtual world, but your constellation should represent how you see the stars. Now, fortunately, because I've used a white paper, you cannot really see much of my um, stars or rather my invisible lines, because again, if you look into the sky, you will not see the invisible lines because constellations, boys and girls, are exactly that. They are stars which are organized in a different manner. But you have to use your imagination. You have to use your brain power to connect the dots into making this. Now, the alternative to this particular practical is that you can use small marshmallows and toothpicks. Pretend as if the marshmallows are stars. Then use the toothpicks to connect the little marshmallows to give you a constellation. I give you the permission to then, after taking a picture and sharing it on Facebook, with the hashtag of our virtual campery to then munch on those marshmallows because you have learned something. You have learned that a group of stars being placed together form a constellation. It's a mouthful, but if you practice it enough, you will be able to then say constellation. Let us now move back onto our slides as we move towards completing our award. Now you will notice that I'm a bit rushed only because I don't want it to be a long and boring video. You should take your time into making it practical. Find joy in it. Find the pleasure in creating all of this for yourself. All right, so just a quick recap. This can then be placed inside a shoe box or into any other little small box for yourself. That's if, of course, you haven't used marshmallows because if you use marshmallows, unfortunately, they will become all sour and they will not taste good at any point. However, you can put this into a shoe box and then look at your particular constellation box or your constellation chart. Now, boys and girls, I need you to understand the difference between stars and planets, all right? So we're going to start off with understanding what stars are. Now, there's a long definition on your screen. Don't focus on that. Focus on what I'm about to tell you. My easiest example of explaining what a star is, is that it is a glowing ball of gas. So all that we see up there on the stars, all right? As soon as my lighter decides to go on, all that we see on the stars every night, twinkling on the universe, are basically this, a ball of gas, which is burning up in the sky, all right? So if you want to really know what the difference is between a planet and a sky, is that a star is a ball of gas, all right? Imagine or rather ignore the stick, but just look at that little sparkle from my fire lighter. And that is exactly what a star is. Do you guys understand? I hope you do, because that is what a star is. It's a glowing 
ball of gas. Now I'm going to leave this to twinkle when we quickly go into our next um, contrast. So the contrast of a star and the planet is that the planet, boys and girls, is literally just a huge mushy ball of substance. Now you will know that on Earth, we literally have a substance of land and a lot of water all around us. And that is what a planet is. Okay, so different planets have different substances. However, the biggest difference or the biggest contrast between a star and a planet is the fact that the planet is larger than the stars. Okay, and then if you're privileged enough to actually download the app, which I told you about, you will then get to see the closest planets to us. On some nights, you will be awarded the opportunity of seeing Mars and um, Mars and what is the second one? Mars and um, Venus and Mars. <laughs> but I get glory, I don't want to lie. A reminder, boys and girls, the biggest difference between a planet and the star is the fact that the planet is bigger than the star. And on most, most nights, if you're really lucky, you can have access to seeing Mars, or you can even see um, Jupiter or Pluto, depending on how we're orbiting the Earth. Now, a reminder that I did say you should download that app. It will serve as a guide, and you will see that the stars and the planets look like they are the same. However, because we have people who have advanced in their knowledge, They've literally orbited around the universe and they've seen that the planets are bigger than the stars. Now, towards completing my presentation, boys and girls, um, as I'm just waiting for the screen to quickly beam the presentation, um, you are always reminded that God's beauty is always displayed around us. And we will only see it if we're intentional about our purposes if we're intentional about putting God first in absolutely everything that we do. Now I'm putting across this challenge to all parents, directors, and all the Pathfinder and Adventurer ministry leaders. Take time to stargaze. Take time to make appointments with appointments with the necessary people who have expertise in these different fields to teach us more about the universe, which we sometimes take for granted because it has always been consistent. But we know that it is not because there is a savior and there's a father up in heaven who controls everything. The final practical demonstration, which I am urging you adventurers to do, in fact, I'm not urging you, it is a requirement. You must do the following, all right? You guys need to create a resistant or resistant profile, or I mean, pro portrait. This can also be alternated by other things. The other alternative crafts to this one, which I'm about to do, is that you can literally build your own solar system. You can go to the different shops and you can literally sometimes use the stuff you have at home to build a solar system to remind you of the stuff which you have learned in this campery. Now, for this one, which I'm going to do, all right, you will need the following. Number one, you will need paint. You will need wax cryers. You will need an outlay of a landscape of some sort. So it could be a moonrise, it could be a sunrise, or it could be a sunset depending on what you are better at doing. Now, remember, this one has to be on a white piece of paper so that you can have fun in making it, all right? And then lastly, boys and girls, um, you will need a paintbrush. A paint tray is a luxury. 
um, but you will need that to complete the following task for me. Now, quickly take your sheets of paper with me, all right? It should already have an outlay of some sort of a sunset. So obviously I have chosen what? Sunset, all right? Well, obviously in order for it to look more artistic, I decided to include a bit of mountains as well. Now you're going to use your wax crayons. Remember, don't use pastels, don't use cookies because then this particular experiment or this particular art piece will not look the same, all right? So you're going to use your white crayon. Yes, you can finally use a white crayon to draw invisible clouds onto this portrait. Portrait. Now, where am I going to put the clouds? Under the mountains? Just above the sun? Around the sun? I think that would be the best place. So I'm quickly going to use my crayon to draw one cloud because I'm in a rush. Now, as you are drawing your cloud, boys and girls, you need to press hard onto your crayon, all right? You really need to put your heart in it and draw as hard as possible so that your invisible cloud can always almost be visible to you, all right? So use that to draw your white cloud and it sounds a bit frustrating and look at me getting all tired and frustrated because I can't really see what I'm coloring in. I'm going to use the word yet. I can't see yet what all my energy is going into, all right? So that's what I'm doing and I'm going to draw the second cloud here. Quickly, quickly color it in. I'm going to put as much energy into it without breaking my wax crying. And that's what you are going to do for me. All right, and then just a random cloud there, a random cloud there, and then a random cloud there. Now, boys and girls, you then need to go to your paint portrait or rather your painting tray and then dip into the blue um, paint. Now, it needs to be really watery, okay? Because the clouds are not this deep, deep blue. So therefore you need to make it a little bit lighter, all right? Hoping that it is not raining during our temporary week. All right, so use that to then draw your clouds. And I'm quickly just making a landscape of my clouds. All right. I'm quickly just making a landscape of my clouds. And you can see I'm literally dipping most of my paint away into the blue paint because I do not want it to be extremely deep blue because the cloud is not royal blue or navy blue. Is that clear? Just one last step and then I'm almost done with this. Now literally again boys and girls I am rushing because this is a recording. Okay you have all the time in the world to master the skill and enjoy doing your crafts. Okay so please take your time into giving quality in your work as though you are making this for Christ himself. Although we all know you will be putting it on your parents' fridge or they will be taking it to their office to remind you again of what you did during our temporary. Okay, then boys and girls, I'm quickly just going to show you how I used my paint, all right? So, as I said that I've used a light blue, you will see that Wherever I used my wax crime, depending on how hard I pressed on it, then the clouds will become visible. And this is then called resistant painting because the white then takes dominance and it shows into your colors. You can apply this to the rest of your artwork and decide where you want the resistance to show over the other. Now, remember, this would be daytime if you remove the sun rays and just leave a white or rather just leave a white blob you could literally color that in as white as well then what is the opposite of the sun it is the moon so you have the power of making this portrait what you want it to be like so earlier on i already did my portrait now, this was my final draft, but you will see I've mastered the process. 
my clouds were not showing very clearly. Why not? Because I did not apply diligence into applying that white crayon. But you can do this, and I'm sure that the Picassos and there are people who can draw way better than me out there. Please remember to share your stuff in or rather onto the TOC website so that or the TOC Facebook page so that we can share each other's experiences in our virtual CAM meeting. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to conclude this award with the following slide. We are then asked to refer again to the Bible because that's where all our knowledge is founded. Our knowledge is founded in the Bible, boys and girls. You are asked to take one of the four verses which I've shared with you, only one of them, and find out how do they refer to the heavens. You can go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, Deuteronomy 10, verse 22, Isaiah 13, verse 10, or Matthew 2, verse 10. So these are the top four. If you and your parents would like to find more verses which speak about heaven, please do so. However, I have chosen this one. And it says, God made the two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. All right? God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser lights to rule the night. Now, boys and girls, he also made the stars. So if you are ever questioned or asked about who made this beautiful world, you know the answer. The answer is that God made all of this. All of this just for us so that we can ponder and gaze upon his greatness. Please join me as we close our eyes in prayer. Loving God, which art in heaven, we thank you for loving us so much and blessing us with the beautiful sunshine and the beautiful stars which are surrounding us at all times. This is a reminder that you are alive and you care about us. Please help us to remember this at all times as we learn about our other awards and as we continue to enjoy this virtual campery. In your loving name, I have prayed. Amen.